On the phone, I have a gentleman who played quarterback not only for the Purdue Boilermakers, also with the Miami Dolphins from 1967 to 1980. He was a six-time Pro Bowler, a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Bob Greasy. How are you doing today, Mr. Greasy? Good. So you went to Purdue for college, and you grew up in Indiana. How did you end up at Purdue? Well, I was not a uh, highly recruited um, uh, athlete coming out of high school. I was a better baseball player probably and a, and a, and a probably a better basketball player than I was a football player. Um, I went to a, a, a new Catholic school, um, high school, when I was uh, a freshman, and the program wasn't really developed. Uh, the coach wasn't uh, uh, that knowledgeable. Uh, we didn't throw the ball a lot. Uh, the only reason I was the quarterback on the team was because uh, he knew that I was a pretty good baseball pitcher and had a strong arm and had thrown some no-hitters. Uh, so he figured that that would be a good guy to have at quarterback. But um, uh, he was a defensive, uh, the head coach was a defensive lineman uh, in college and uh, didn't know a lot about throwing the football. So we had three passes. We had one to the right uh, called Rex, one to the left called Lavender, and one over the middle called, uh, what was it called? Milton. I think it was Milton. Uh, and that was it. So um, I, I was not a highly recruited uh, kid for football. I could have gone a couple places for uh, basketball, and I also uh, had an opportunity to sign with the Baltimore Orioles as a baseball pitcher, but I wanted to go to Purdue to get an education, and, um, uh, and that's that's the name of that tune. So that coach prepared you for the Dolphins, though, handing the ball off to Kick and Zonk and Mercury Morris. Well, Bob DeMoss was uh, my offensive coordinator at Purdue. Uh, Jack Mollenkoff was the head coach, and uh, they kind of uh, straightened me out, showed me how to throw the ball, and you know, by the time I was through Purdue uh, four years later, um, uh, one of the highlights uh, uh, while I was at school is that my senior year we went to uh, the Rose Bowl, the first time that Purdue had ever gone to the Rose Bowl, and uh, we, we beat uh, Southern California in the game, and uh, so so I, went, I so went on with, to with the Dolphins and, uh, and did pretty well. But Bob DeMoss had a big, uh, I give a lot of credit to showing me how to throw the football properly. Then it'd be a thrill beating USC because, I mean, they had a ton of talent back then. You had OJ and Garrett and you had Ron Yari in the offensive line. Yeah, we, uh, we really killed them. We beat them 14 to 13, I think. I mean, everybody talks about Miami being quarterback U. Purdue's basically had, I think, as many pro football Hall of Famers as Miami did. You, Len Dawson, Drew Brees will end up being a Hall of Famer eventually. Yeah, uh, uh, I think they call, I, I think, what, what's the name, what's, what do they call themselves? The Cradle of Quarterbacks, I think, is what it is. Uh, yeah, we've, we've had quite a few quarterbacks that have been very successful, and it's basically because of Bob DeMoss. Uh, early on, he was the the coach and uh, the system, the way they threw the ball around and uh, uh, and the good coaching that they got. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's we've had some good quarterbacks at Purdue. Then you get drafted by the Dolphins, and when you went to the Dolphins, I mean, they were basically the bottom of the NFL until Shula came there and basically turned them around. Yeah. Um, we knew that we weren't uh, we weren't going to get very far until Coach Shula came. I got there in '67. It was the second year of the Dolphins um, uh, franchise, and Coach Shula came in 1970, which was the fourth year. And uh, he, I think, in '69 we were like I don't know three ten and one. We only played 14 games back then. And in 1970, I think we. Had, Completely turned that around. We were like ten and four. Uh, the next year we were in the in the playoffs, uh, and then three Super Bowls in a row, and we won the last two. And one of those Super Bowls was the undefeated season that nobody has done before or after. So, uh, yeah, I would say Shula made a big impact. Uh, <laughs> in the first four years of Coach Shula, we were in the Super Bowl three times. 
The forgotten man, though, all your teammates say is your offensive line coach, Monty Clark. I mean, he put that line together, and that's what basically I think was the key to your success. Well, he was pretty good. Monty was 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 he had just gotten out of the league after playing himself, and he was uh, two or three years out of the league, I think it was. And the main thing that he did, uh, aside from coach these guys up real good, is that he he brought in guys uh, uh, that weren't drafted. He Jim Langer, our center, uh, was a practice squad player uh, with the Cleveland Browns. And Monty knew about him, and he brought Jim Langer in as a free agent. Uh, Jim Langer ended up playing for 10 or 12 years and is now in the Hall of Fame. He also brought in Bob Kuchenberg, uh, who he knew about, uh, who was also a free agent uh, and played 15 or 16 years and was on that offensive line during the 70s that was so good. Uh, Wayne Moore he brought in from uh, San Francisco. So anyway, and, and then Larry Little was brought in. So four of those five guys on the offensive line uh, were free agents, and most of them uh, Monty Clark knew about. And when he did get them back in Miami, he uh, coached them up really well. We had a really good offensive line. And, I mean, you had three stud running backs. You had Zonka, Kick, and Mercury Morris, too, which kind of made things a little easier on you. Yeah, I did. Yeah. People say the only person who could stop Paul Warfield was Don Shula. Do you agree with that? Well, if if Warfield were play were playing today, um, uh, he uh, and if he were in a different type of a system uh, where they threw the ball a lot, uh, you know, today's uh, game is a, is is a passing game. Back then, uh, it was not that much of a passing game. It was more of a running game. Uh, and then the other thing is the rules have changed. Uh, uh, now you can you you can jam a guy within five yards of the line of scrimmage. You can jam a wide receiver, uh, and then you have to not you can't touch him uh, down the field. Back in the day when Warfield was playing, uh, you could you could throw a cross body block at a receiver coming off the line of scrimmage, and you could hit him. If he was down 15, 20 yards downfield, as long as he was in front of the defensive back, the defensive back could jam him, knock him off his feet, as long as the ball wasn't in the play. So the rules back then, when Warfield played, were a heck of a lot different than when Jerry Rice played and all these guys today are playing. Jerry Rice playing back, uh, back when Warfield played, he would have had a, he wouldn't have caught nearly as many balls as he caught today. I guarantee you. And Warfield probably would have caught double the balls he caught. Well, he certainly would have caught a lot more. There ain't no question about that. What was your favorite uh, moment in the NFL? Well, I have to say, winning Super Bowls. You know, um, the first one we lost uh, to Dallas in New Orleans. Uh, the second one we. We were uh, we were 16 and 0, uh, ready to go undefeated, and we played in the Super Bowl against the Washington Redskins, and uh, we were uh, underdogs. Here we were 16 and 0, hadn't lost a game, and we were underdogs, and we beat them. Uh, uh, if Garrow makes a field goal at the end of the game, we we would have beaten them 17 to nothing, but uh, he kicks the ball, gets it blocked, and they run it back for a touchdown, and we win the game only 14 to 7 and then uh, the following year we go back and validate that win in the Super Bowl by winning it again against uh, the Minnesota Vikings so uh, you know team wins you know that's uh, you asked me what were the highlights uh, in college it was winning the Rose Bowl game and in, in the pros it was uh, winning two championships and you would have won more championships if it wasn't for that WFL I believe well, you're talking about in uh, seven after the '74 season when Zaka, Kick, and Warfield, uh, really the heart of our offense, uh, signed with uh, I think it was Memphis uh, of the uh, what they call it the World Football League or something. Right. Really, they, they never they never played a game. They, they signed a contract and they're supposed to play, 
uh, and the league never got off the ground. And uh, so they didn't come back with the Dolphins. They they were free agents. They went. They they all signed somewhere else. When you went in the Hall of Fame, how did that feel? Well, um, I never expected. I never expected uh, that I was going to be inducted into the uh, National Football League Hall of Fame. Uh, in fact, my son Brian. I, I, in the last couple of years of my uh, career, I wore glasses when I played. I had a vision problem, uh, and and so when when I retired, they put my glasses in the Hall of Fame because no quarterback had ever worn glasses while he played. And my son Brian, who later went on, went on and played in the league, my my son Brian, I don't know how old he was, so he must have been a teenager at the time. He's, he looked at me one time and he said, that's as close as you'll ever come to being in the Hall of Fame with your glasses being in there. So so um, in 1990, when I was inducted into the Hall of Fame, my kids were there in the front row and Brian was right there. So the first thing I said was, I said, well, this is the Hall of Fame, huh? And I looked down at Brian and I said, in your face, Brian. <laughs> that's a... Sh- Easiest way to shut up your kid. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we we like to kid each other back and forth, but I think that that was the best one that, that I've ever got on him. You know what though? Those glasses made you look real smart. Everybody said you were a thinking man's quarterback. Yeah, well, that means he didn't couldn't throw the ball very well. I guess I don't know. 